Hey, welcome in. Well, I got to tell you, what's shocking these days is that nothing's shocking. Here's the headline. White House celebrates Maoist Yuri Kochiyama, who cheered bin Laden and communist massacre in Peru. A Biden admin celebrates activist who said bin Laden is uh, one of the people that I admire. And what's frightening is that it's actually not even surprising. Now, Biden obviously has no idea who this person is. And if he did, I doubt he would care uh, that they're celebrating this person. But it's the people around him, right? It's the people that are making the decisions. You know, Biden's there. He's in the White House. He probably knows where they keep the butterscotch pudding. But that's probably about it. It's the people that are surrounding him. So what happened here? Uh, The White House Initiative on Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders posted a celebration of Women's History Month Friday honoring activist Yuri Kochiyama, who was a public admirer of terrorist Osama bin Laden. Let's see. uh, Kochiyama was a Japanese-American activist for communism and racial equality during the 20th century. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about her. Says Yuri Kochiyama was an American communist, terrorist sympathizer, supporter of black separatism, and civil rights activist. (laughs) So let's see, she's uh, pro-communism, she's a terrorist sympathizer, and she's pro, I guess, racial separatism, and civil rights. (laughs) You can't make this up, folks. But anyway, now she did have a rough go of it early in her life. Uh, As a Japanese-American, she was placed into an internment camp during the outbreak of World War II. So, you know, you can understand being a little pissed off. But she was more than a little pissed off. She was uh, radicalized. And while you can find some empathy for her, uh, do you really want to celebrate somebody who admired Osama bin Laden? Somebody who championed Chairman Mao's Great Leap Forward and was an advocate for terrorists? I mean, let's take a look at uh, Chairman Mao's Great Leap Forward. Uh, The Great Leap Forward was 1958 to 1962, and it was a campaign to reconstruct the country from an agrarian economy into a communist society through the formation of people's communes. And what was the consequence of Chairman Mao's communist plan? Uh, Let's see, millions of people died in China during the Great Leap, with estimates ranging from 15 to 55 million making the Great Chinese Famine the largest or second largest famine in human history. So, uh, not great, right? (laughs) Not great. So what did she say about bin Laden? She said, uh, quote, I consider Osama bin Laden as one of the people that I admire. I mean, you'd think that, you know, right there, anything associated with the White House should maybe take a step back and just reconsider. To me, he's in the category of Malcolm X, Che Guevara, Patrice Lumumba, Fidel Castro. So we got some more here. Uh, How about Che? Let's check him out. Let's check out this article. uh, The crass marketing of a sadistic racist. How about that? Here's a snippet from a 1966 uh, speech by Guevara. Hatred is the central element of our struggle. Hatred that is intransigent. Hatred so violent that it propels a human being beyond his natural limitations making him a violent and cold-blooded killing machine. I mean, what's not to love in this, right? Uh, We reject any peaceful approach. Violence is inevitable. To establish socialism, rivers of blood must flow. The imperialist enemy must feel like a hunted animal wherever he moves. Thus we'll destroy him. These hyenas are fit only for extermination. We must keep our hatred alive and fan it to paroxysm. The victory of socialism is well worth millions of atomic victims. Yeah, there's a reason you don't see that printed on the back of those uh, shade t-shirts that you see the cool kids wearing, right? Let's see, this White House initiative uh, honored Kochiyama's political and civil rights work. Well, for somebody who's interested in civil rights, she's got some awfully strange uh, heroes, doesn't she? How's this for civil rights? Uh, Fidel Castro's horrific record on gay rights. She likes Castro too, don't forget. Concentration camps for gays, political prisons where they were treated like beasts. Listen up, liberals. Before you celebrate Castro, remember his victims. This is from the Daily Beast, for God's sakes. This isn't from some far-right blog, okay? This is the Daily Beast. 
Anyway, let's end this off with another, uh, I guess, civil rights movement uh, that she supported, uh, the Shining Path Movement. And they're Maoists, of course. Let's see. When it first launched the internal conflict in Peru in 1980, its goal was to overthrow the government through guerrilla warfare and replace it with a new democracy. The Shining Path believed that by establishing a dictatorship of the proletariat, including a cultural revolution, and eventually sparking a world revolution, they could arrive at full communism. Eh, no thanks. But let's take a little look at their uh, human rights work here. Let's see, the organization's use of violence is well documented. Uh, Shining Path would kill their opponents with assassinations, bombings, beheadings, and massacres, as well as stoning victims to death or placing them in boiling water. Ugh. You know, I really feel like the, the White House needs to work a little bit harder to vet the things they support. But, you know, I couldn't help but notice. Now, this is from uh, 2014. This is from the Obama White House. This is the year that Yuri Kochiyama died, and the Obama White House honored her legacy, honoring the legacy of Yuri Kochiyama. So, I don't know, I guess there's a bit of a pattern going on here. Let's see, The Shining Path rejected the concept of human rights. Great, great. Makes you wonder how much of a human rights advocate this lady really was. And this is from Wikipedia, by the way, right? So they're giving you the most favorable view of this Marxist group uh, possible. Oh, and we've got accusations of violence against LGBT people here too. So there's some more civil rights for you. This is what happens when woke lunatics ascend to uh, the highest rungs of power. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Please subscribe, like, and share. That really helps me out. If you'd just like to listen, there's the podcast, Radio Baloney. It's on pretty much every platform. If you look for it, you will find it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.